from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering GitLab Commit 2020. Brought to you by GitLab. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is GitLab Commit 2020 here in San Francisco. Happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, Ian Tien, who is the co-founder and CEO of Mattermost. Ian, nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks, Stu. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, so uh, I always love when you get the founders. We go back to a little bit of the why, and uh, just from our little bit of conversation, uh, there is a connection with GitLab. Uh, you have a relationship with Sid, uh, who is the uh, co-founder co and CEO of GitLab. So bring us back and uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks. So I'm, you know, I'm ex-Microsoft, so I came from collaboration for, for many years there. And then, you know, what I did um, after Microsoft, I started my own, uh, started, I started a video game company. It was backed by Y Combinator, and you know, we had, we were doing the HTML5 game engine. It was very, it was very fun, um, and we ran the entire company off of a messaging product. Um, this is, you know, a little while ago, and what happens is that messaging product got bought by a big company. And, that, and it got kind of neglected. It started crashing, it would lose data, we were super unhappy. We tried to export and they wouldn't let us export. We had 26 gigs of all our information and when we stopped paying our subscription, they would paywall us from our own information. So, you know, very unhappy and we're like, holy cats, like what are we gonna do? Um, and rather than go to another platform, we actually realized we have about 10 million hours of people running messaging in our own video games. Well, why don't we kind of build this ourselves? So we kind of built a little prototype, we started using it ourselves internally, and because, you know, Sid was, this is 2015, and Sid was out of Y Combinator, and we were Y Combinator, we were at an event, and we started talking, and I was showing him what we built, and Sid's like, you should open source that. And he had this really compelling um, reason, he's like, well, if you open source it, and people like it, you can always close source it again because it's a prototype. But if you open source it and no one cares, you should stop doing what you do. And he was great to kind of send me like this little email with like all the things you need to do uh, to run an open source business. And um, it, was, it was just wonderful. And it just, it just started taking off. We started getting these uh, the wonderful, amazing enterprise customers that really saw what, what Mattermost was at the very beginning, which was, you know, some people call us open source Slack. Um, but what it really is, it's, it's, a collabor it's a collaboration platform for real-time DevOps. And it really is for people who are regulated. It's going to offer flexibility and on-prem deployment and a lot of security and customization. So, you know, that's kind of we started and GitLab was, um, we kind of started following, we started following GitLab's footsteps. And what you'll find today with GitLab is we're, we're bundled with the Omnibus. So all you have to do is, you know, put like, what URL would you like Mattermost on, run GitLab reconfigure, and, and you're up and running. Yeah, love that, yeah. that, that story. I um, would love you to tease out a little bit when you hear, you know, open source, you know, communications and secure might not be things yeah. that people would necessarily all put together. Um, so, you know, help us understand a little bit the underlying architecture. This isn't just, uh, you, you know, uh, isn't messaging. It's, it, it, it's how is it different from uh, things that people would be familiar with? Yeah, that's a great question. So how do you get more secure with open source pro products? And the one thing to look at, I'll just give you one example, is mobility, right? So in mobile today, if you're, pushing a, if you're sh sh setting a push notification um, to an iOS or an Android device, it has to route through like Google or Android, right? And whatever app that you're using to send those notifications, they're going to see your, they're going to see your notifications. They have to, right? So even if you've got encryption and all that stuff, in order to send to Google, and in Android, you have to send it unencrypted. Um, and you know, these applications are not, they're not yours. They're, they're owned by another organization. So how do you make that private? How do you make it secure? So with open source communication, you get the source code. It's in the extreme case. Like we have you know, apps you can use, and it's really simple and turnkey. Um, but in the, if you want to go in the full privacy, most security, you have the full source code to apps. You have the full source code to the system, including what pushes the messages to your apps and you can compile them with your own certificates. And you can set up a, a system where you actually have complete privacy and no third party can actually get your information. And why enterprises um, in many cases want that extreme privacy is because when you're doing incident response and you have information about a vulnerability or a breach that could really upset you know, many, many critical systems, if that information leaked out, you really can't, many people don't want it ever to touch a third party. So you know, that's one example of how open source lets you have that privacy and security because, you've, because you control everything. All right, Ian, yeah. walk me through a little yeah. bit the speeds and feeds. How many employees do you have? How many do you share? How many customers do you have? Uh, where yeah. you are with funding? 
So where we are funding is, you know, last year we announced a 20 million series A and a 50 million series B. We went from about 40 folks at the beginning of the year to about 100 um, at the end of the year. We've got over 1,000 people that contribute to Mattermost. And what you'll find is, um, what you'll find is every sort of GitLab Omnibus installation is going to have a Mattermost, is going to have the ability to sort of turn on Mattermost. So very broad reach, it's sort of like one step away. There's lots of customers you can uh, see at GitLab Commit that are running Mattermost and GitLab together. So, you know, customers are going to include, hey, there's uh, the ITK and agriculture that's got six times faster deployments running GitLab and Mattermost together. You've got, you know, Worldline, it's got, you know, 3,000 people on the system. Um, so you've got a, a lot of, so we're, growing really quickly and uh, there's a lot of opportunity working with GetLab to bring GetLab into mobile and into sort of real-time DevOps scenarios. Yeah, and definitely one of the themes we hear at the, at the show is that GitLab's really enabling the remote workforce, especially when you talk about the developers. It sounds like that's very much in line with, with what Mattermost is doing. Absolutely, Mattermost was remote first. I don't even actually know, we're probably in 20 plus countries. Um, and it's a, it's a remote team, so we use, use Mattermost to collaborate and, and we use you know, video conferencing and issue tracking across a, a bunch of different systems. And yeah, it's, just, it's remote first, it's how, it's how we work, it's very natural. Yeah, Ian, I, yeah. just give us a little bit of the insight. How do you make sure as, as CEO yeah. that you, you know, have the, the culture and getting everyone on the same page uh, when many of them, you know, you're not seeing them regularly, some of them you've probably never met in person. So. Yeah, that's a great question. So how do you sort of maintain that culture? And one of the, one of the concepts that GetLab's pioneered is the concept of boring solutions. And it's something that we've taken on as well. What's the most boring solution to preserve culture and to scale? And it's really do what GetLab's doing, right? So GetLab's got handbook dot getlab.com, we've got handbook.mattermost.com, and it's really writing down all the things that, you know, how we operate, what our culture is, and what our values are, so that every person that onboards is going to get the same experience, right? And then what happens is people think that if you're in a building, you're going to have stronger culture because you know, sort of like you know, absorb and things. But what actually happens is it's this little broken telephone and it starts echoing out, and it's opposed to going one source of truth. It's everyone's interpretation. And when you have a handbook and you're forced to write things down, it's a very unnatural act. And when you force people to write things down, then you get that consistency, and everyone can go to a source of truth and say like, this is the way we operate. Yeah, uh, in 2019 was an interesting year for open source. Uh, there were certain companies that were changing their models as to how they do things. Um, you started it open source to be able to get you know direct feedback, but you know how do you position and talk to people about you know the, the role of open source uh, and still being able to have a business around that? So open source is. Uh I think there's a, a generation of open source companies that, so there's three ways you can really make money from open source, right? You can host software, you can provide support and services, or you can do licensing, which is an open core model. And what you see is categories of companies like, you see categories like Elastic, like HashiCorp with Terraform and Vault with GetLab that have chosen the open core model, and this is really becoming sort of a standard. Um, and what we do is we follow that standard and we know that it supports public companies, it supports companies with hyper growth like GetLab. So it's a very, it's a becoming a model that is actually quite familiar to the market. And what we see is this, this sort of generation, this sort of movement of, okay, there was operating systems, there's Windows Server, well now there's, Lin now there's more servers running Linux than Windows Server on Azure. Uh, you've seen virtualization technology, you've seen databases all sort of go the open source way, and we see that as a natural progression of, of collaboration. So it's really like we believe collaboration will go the open source way, we believe the leading the way to do that is through open core because you can generate a sustainable, scalable business that's going to give enterprises the confidence to, to invest in, in, the, in the right platform. All right, uh, Ian, what's on deck for Mattermost in 2020? It's really, we want, definitely want to work with uh, GetLab a lot more. We really want to go from this concept of concurrent DevOps that GetLab's really championed to say real-time DevOps. So we've got DevOps in the world that's taking months and weeks of cycle times and bring that down to minutes. We want to take you know, all your processes that take hours and take it down to seconds. So um, what really people, what developers are sort of you know, clamoring for a lot is like, well, how do I get these, if I'm regulated, if I have a lot of customization needs, if I'm on premise, if I'm in a private network, how do I get to mobile? How do I get you know, quicker interactions? Um, and we really want to support that with instant response, with DevSecOps use cases, and with really having a complete solution that can go from all your infrastructure 
uh, in your data center to you know that really important person walking through the airport, and that's and that's how you speed cycle times. You make DevSecOps available anywhere, and you do it securely, and you do it privately. All right. Ian, thanks so much for meeting with us, and uh, great to hear about Mattermost. Cool, thank you, Stu. All right, uh, be sure to check out thecube.net for all the coverage that we will have throughout 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE.